What you see nestled amongst the junk on the workbench is a rare specimen indeed. This is the Panasonic Toughbook CF27. And over here in this lurid pink container is our medium of installation for Windows 95. This machine would be capable of running a much newer operating system such as Windows 98 or Windows 2000 and possibly even NT. However, it has a Windows 95 key on the bottom of it, therefore it will be getting Windows 95, since I do want to keep the operating system original to what the machine would have shipped with. Now this uh, particular CF27 is not all original parts. The um, It's a mix and match. I ordered two machines from eBay. Um, I got myself into a bit of a... Uh, bidding frenzy and, well, I outbid the one other person that was interested in these particular machines. Now I paid next to nothing for them and they had free shipping on them, so I would imagine that the seller probably ended up losing money on that, unfortunately for them. But that's not of my concern. Now the machine itself is rather beat up on the top, as you can see it's got some chips going around along the uh, edges, <clears throat> but it is actually not too bad internally. The uh, palm rest area is a little bit worn, but nowhere near as badly as the other machine. Matter of fact, what I did was I took the top half of this machine and swapped it with the top half that was currently on it. So I took and kind of, you know, moved, moved the lower case from one to the other, kept the screen, and I switched keyboards since the other one was missing some keys. Now this is a really horribly yellowed keyboard, but it's as good as they come, really. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera on up. There we go. Now you can see the screen. I will be installing Windows 95, as I said, off of 22 floppy disks, so this is going to take a while. Unfortunately, I do not have the CD-ROM drive attachment. I only have the floppy drive for this particular model. I have had very little luck using external drives to install Windows 95 in the past, such as an external USB drive. This device does have USB 1.1, however, I don't believe I'll be able to get it to boot off of the USB CD-ROM drive, even with a utility such as Plop. Um, I've tried in the past, and I've failed in the past. First of all, I want to make sure that the floppy drive is not going to eat my installation media. I think this disk here contains the plop boot utility, so I'm going to see if it will, in fact, boot off of that first. I don't want to stick my installation media in here to find out that it isn't eating it. I only have one copy of Windows 95 on floppy disks, and I value it quite heavily. <clears throat> Now the machine does recognize the hard drive that I put in it in the BIOS. I actually installed a 60 gigabyte hard drive because it's the smallest one that I know that works. Unfortunately, I do not know if the Windows 95 installer will be able to utilize it. Now it says here the hard drive is not found. However, in the BIOS it does show a 60 gigabyte drive as the primary master. And it does look like Plop is at least making somewhat of an attempt to boot. Although it seems to have hung prematurely, I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm hoping the machine is just taking its good sweet time, however, I think we might have an issue with this floppy drive. If there is a problem with the drive, that's not an issue because I do have three other ones. I have another one in the CF27, and I believe the CF28s use the same floppy drive. So, if worse comes to worse, I'll just swap a drive out of one of those. Matter of fact, I may have to do that, because it does not appear that this is reading the disk properly. No, it doesn't look like it's going to want to boot. Let's try that one more time. Give the disk a bit of a wiggle, make sure it's seated in there properly. No, it has, uh, it has stopped far prematurely. Alright, 
I'm going to go get the other floppy disk and we will pick up. Okay, I have installed a new floppy drive. Now let's see if it will boot off of this disk once again. It could be possible that the machine is just not capable of booting the plop utility, but I seriously doubt that. <clears throat> hmm. It does the exact same thing. A bit odd. Well, that tells me one thing, that I don't believe the drive itself is bad. Let's go ahead and try the uh, Windows 98 utility. It could be that I have a bad plop installation disk. Doesn't look like it did any damage, though. Let's try... Let's first try an MS-DOS disk, because I have several of these. Uh, disk 1 setup. Let's see if we can install, we can format and install MS-DOS onto the hard drive. Though being a 60 gigabyte hard drive, that may not work very well. It appears to be booting MS-DOS. Alright, well it looks like the drive definitely works. There must have been something wrong with my plop disk. Uh, Alright, well that looks good. I'm not going to bother messing with that. It booted that okay. So now, on to Windows 95. I need to determine which disk is the, the first one in the group that I need. Setup boot disk, disk one setup. I think you need the setup boot disk first. Yeah, it looks like they're in order. So, I'm going to go ahead with the setup boot disk. Insert that. And we'll see if we can get it to work. I'm hoping that has our drive partitioning and format utilities on it. Well, F disk. That way I can check and see if the drive itself is recognized. Because it is giving me warnings about the hard drive. This machine may not like the 60 gigabyte drive. I may have to instead replace it with a slightly dodgy 2 gigabyte drive that I have lying around, which is an option, not a good option, but an option nonetheless. <clears throat> in fact, I'll get that out because I'm fairly certain I will have to end up swapping that hard drive. What I hope to be able to do in the long run is replace the mechanical hard drive with an SD card adapter. That way this machine will be truly solid state with no moving parts. Since this machine is totally passively cooled, that should be pretty easy to achieve. Now for specs, I've got 192 megabytes of RAM in here, I think, something like that. 196 maybe. Um, as I said before, I have that 60 gigabyte hard drive installed, which is not really anything that could have come with this type of machine. That is way, way bigger than what this machine was ever designed to use. Um, it's also got a Pentium 2 300 megahertz processor, so not the quickest thing in the world, but it should run Windows 95 very well. Let's go ahead and press Enter to continue. Configure first hard disk. Okay. 
configure your hard disk now. Press Y. Yes, enable large disk support. Setup will restart your computer now. Please make sure Windows 95 boot disk is in drive A to continue. Press Enter. I do want to continue. Now this screen actually looks pretty darn good on this laptop. It has a slight dark spot up here in the corner, or up up towards the top, but it's really not bad. <clears throat> Definitely doesn't detract from the usability of the display at all. It's very, it actually looks really quite bad on the camera, but in, in real life it looks perfectly acceptable. I believe it's a 12.5 inch screen-ish, somewhere in that range. It's a fairly small screen itself, and it does appear that it has detected drive C and is formatting it, so that is a very good sign. <clears throat> There's a good chance that the uh, operating system will not be able to utilize the entire disk. It's very likely <clears throat> that the operating system will only be able to take, like, two or six gigabytes of the actual disk itself and utilize it. However, the BIOS does detect it as a 60 gigabyte drive, so I'm not sure if the limitation will be imposed by Windows 95 or by the computer itself. I'm not going to make you guys wait around for this, so we'll go ahead and skip to when it's done. Well, that took its good sweet time. It was about oh, 20 minutes ago that I started the formatting process and just finally got done. It has prog uh, progressed on to disk number 2 out of 22, so this is going to still take about another 2 hours. But, as you can see here, we are prompted with the Windows 95 setup screen. And it's asking me if I want to continue or exit. Let's go ahead and click Continue. Does the mouse work? Yes, the mouse does. It's one of the worst touchpads I've ever seen in my life. Most of these tough books have really horrid trackpads. I, I wish they would have gone with something like a track point or the um, little nub that um, IBM used on their ThinkPad lines. Those would have been a far better choice, I feel, anyway. There's some sort of like little joystick thing or something instead of these horrible pressure-sensitive trackpads. They just don't work in the slightest. They're garbage. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. And they have carried them over all the way up into the, moder the modern ones, and I really, really dislike them. Although, I must say, I really enjoy the tough books in every other sense. So, well, it's a trade-off, I guess. The CF28s aren't nearly as bad. Oh, excuse me. Aren't nearly as bad in regards to their touchpad as this one. And it's already done with our setup disk number one. Let's go on to two. Click OK. Probably be easier just to hit enter. <clears throat> I also won't make you guys suffer through watching, I don't know, 20, 19 discs worth of information copying. It's going to take a very long time. But it does appear that it formatted the hard drive correctly and is in fact working properly, which I'm really, really impressed with. I thought for sure that this thing was going to have trouble with a 60 gigabyte hard drive. I I know that Windows 95 is going to have some trouble with it. I doubt if it's going to be able to use the entire disk. Matter of fact, I will I will eat my hat if it is able to utilize the entire 60 gigabyte disk. Only one problem with that is I'm not wearing a hat, and I don't actually own any hats. Hmm. We have successfully completed installing the files from the floppy disks, and it is getting ready to boot up for the first time. It's exciting. Let's see what this thing can do. We, I believe it is totally booted from the hard drive now, so it appears to be working. I'm curious to see how big it actually thinks the hard drive is once we get into the OS. That is going to be a bit bit of a uh, dilemma here, because I have a feeling it's not going to be 60 gigabytes, but hey, 
shall see. Okay. We are on Eastern Time. Okay. Click Next. And we don't, we don't need printers. Finish configuring your system. Press OK. I definitely don't need to set up printers on this machine. <clears throat> I don't know what this save to disk feature is that it's complaining about, but I don't really care either. If it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't affect the system, then hey, whatever. Well, look at that. No display driver, obviously, so I'm going to have to uh, try to locate that at some point. However, we have a working system. Let's go ahead and... Go to my computer and do a properties on drive C. It is actually detecting the entire disk. What a miracle. And uh, I don't have a hat to eat. I said I would eat one, but I don't. Hmm. Well, too bad. Look at that, guys. I did not expect that at all. So apparently Windows 95 can utilize up to the uh, full 60 gigabyte disk. It could probably go even higher. I don't know what the actual physical limit is on hard drive space. This might just have to keep that hard drive because I don't have any use for it. And well, I mean, if I get a battery for this, I would like to use a solid state option. That way it uses a whole lot less power. But let's see if the machine actually detects USB devices. It's a 16 gigabyte flash drive, which is a little bit large. Let's go ahead and plug that in and see if it can actually see it. I doubt if it will be able to. Uh, we'll probably have to install the USB driver, and there's a good chance that's going to have to be done from floppy disks. I am seeing absolutely no response from plugging that device in at all. So let's go ahead and open up my computer. Yep, we got nothing in there. I am going to insert our USB supplement for Windows 95, and we'll see if that happens to have any USB drivers on it. I would imagine that's what this is for. I'm hoping to be able to get the USB port working first, that way I can use USB drives to move all the rest of the drivers over here instead of having to load them onto floppy disks. Because doing that requires me to get out a third computer and use it as a mediator for this, because my main machine does not have a floppy drive. So I would have to dig out one of my Windows XP boxes, and that would be a bit of a pain in the ass. So. Let's go ahead and tell it yes to install the Microsoft USB supplement to the system. And we will accept that. I definitely read everything there. I, I guarantee it. It is checking file allocation tables, whatever the hell that means. Seems to be working. <laughs> Okay, we have the USB supplement installed. I'm going to press OK, and I believe it is then going to restart my computer. Shall see if it detects the flash drive now. I'm hoping the fact that it's plugged in does not hang the boot, um, but I don't think it's going to. No. This will, though. Left my floppy disk in there. This is 
with a bit of a two-handed procedure. Hmm. It appears I'm not even getting power to the USB port in the back there. This may, this may be a bit more tricky than I expected. I think I'm going to have to have a rummage around and see if I can find the drivers for this. There's a good chance I'll have to load them via a floppy disk, unfortunately. However, I should be able to get drivers for USB working eventually. <clears throat> well guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little look at the Panasonic Toughbook CF27. And uh, there will be another video on this eventually. Right now I'm working on getting all the drivers on here, but it's going to take considerable time and I don't want to make you guys sit through all of that. Later on we'll go ahead and test some of the different... Uh, kind of do some benchmarks on it, some of the different features. We'll look at a lot of the different stuff with the system and see what sets it apart from a lot of the other tough books. But for now, that's all I've got for you, so take it easy, guys.